Ava is my name. I'm a 30-year-old office worker. In fact, I just got married a few days ago. I've been a workaholic since I was a child and was promoted to team leader, which is an impressive feat for a woman. My career satisfied me, but being alone might be lonely at times. I'd hear whispers from the younger employees that, no matter how competent she is at her profession, living without a husband after 40 isn't nice, or she seems to have missed out on a woman's happiness. Backbiting was something I was aware of. There were co-workers who admired me, but the breeze of society was frigid to a single lady in her 40s. Then I ran into Liam again at a high school reunion. Liam was likewise single and appeared to be looking for a partner but couldn't manage to locate one. We struck it off right away and got married after dating for a bit. Like me, Liam may have made the easy calculation that he would marry anyone if he could. But I had a soft spot for Liam, an old acquaintance I'd known since high school. I assumed that as our marriage progressed, our love would get stronger. I hoped that would happen. Liam stipulated one condition for marriage. That was to reside at his family's home with his mother. Liam, who had lost his father when he was young and lived with his mother, couldn't take the thought of leaving his ailing mother alone. One of the reasons Liam's quest for a partner was likely unsuccessful was that living with his mother-in-law could be difficult. But, before marriage, the mother-in-law appeared like a nice person, saying things like, I have no doubt about anyone who will become Liam's wife. I was afraid he'd be alone his entire life, and I'm so relieved that it brings tears to my eyes. In the long run, I'd probably have to care for her in her old age, so I reasoned that it could be preferable to live together from the beginning. That's what I assumed. I also established a condition for living together. This was about bringing James, my long-term cat. On a rainy day, I carried a stray cat to my apartment complex. He's now an important member of the family. I couldn't stand parting with James even after I married and relocated to my husband's parents' place. As I pleaded, Liam and my future mother-in-law graciously agreed. So, following a simple wedding ceremony, James and I entered Liam's family house. However, once we started living together, my mother-in-law, who was meant to be kind, drastically changed her attitude. Ava, now that you're married and a member of this family, won't you take care of the chores every day? My mother-in-law sipped her tea with a tranquil face. Ah, uh, finally, Liam is married. I can take it easy from now on. I've been telling him to hurry, find a woman, and bring her home since my back is hurting. Ha! Huh? What? I couldn't catch up with the quick change. Did she mean all the chores were my responsibility? Of course, since I was living there, I meant to do my part of the housework. But the way my mother-in-law's phrasing it, it sounded like I'd be doing everything. It should have been distributed among the three of us, including Liam. Divided. Wait a minute, please. I didn't get married to become a maid. I tried to assert, but my mother-in-law casually remarked, Oh, didn't you say you wanted to dedicate yourself to your mother-in-law? Ha! Huh. When and who stated that? When I scowled at Liam, who was standing next to me, he quickly diverted his gaze. Liam had apparently been lying to my mother-in-law in order to impress her. Whatever Liam says, I'm not here to be a maid. Of course, I'll do my fair share of the housekeeping, but it should be shared among the three of us. For the sake of the future, it was preferable to disclose the truth sooner rather than later. Oh my. Do you think Liam should help with the housekeeping as well? Liam is an adult. Men are now expected to handle housekeeping. What happens to single men who live alone if men don't do housework? That's correct. Isn't housework exclusively the domain of women? Liam also mentioned something similar. Do these two have antiquated ideas from before the 1980s? If this were a computer operating system, it would have been decommissioned long ago. I was horrified on the inside, but I couldn't say anything else to Liam or my mother-in-law. 
I guess I believed it was vital to play the good wife at this time. They proceeded to dump the housework on me as if they could see right through me. So my hellish existence began. Hey! Get up instead of sleeping in. Begin making breakfast as soon as possible. My mother-in-law kicked my pillow before the sun even rose at 4 a.m. My mother-in-law was elderly, so she always got up early and came to wake me up, with little regard for the fact that it was the couple's bedroom. It didn't matter if I had worked late the night before or if it was a holiday. A kick to my pillow jolted me out of sleep, and Liam was sound asleep next to me. I jolted Liam awake. Could you please say something to your mother? It is still 4 a.m. Liam mumbled something that sounded like he was half asleep. Older people get up early, so give her some slack and yawn. I'm going to bed now. As Liam was about to fall asleep again, I kicked his pillow away with all my strength. You should also do some housework. I don't want to be the only one who is awakened. Ha! Huh? Why me? Mom always thought it was the wife's responsibility. His son is like his mother. Furthermore, James, who sleeps in a different room, began to wake up early as a result of my mother-in-law. Actually, as soon as my mother-in-law awoke, she'd pester James, which would wake him up and cause him to come to me for assistance. It was hard for me to sleep if he started making a commotion with his end-of-the-world meowing. Then, on the opposite side, my mother-in-law would complain about the noise. Loudspeakers from their right and left felt like they were attacking me. I was completely miserable. I adored James, but I despised both my mother-in-law and my husband. Even if I began performing chores at 4 a.m., my mother-in-law and my husband would only complain about my techniques. Please improve. Despite reaching the age of 40, you can't even complete one chore properly. What a waste of time. We need you to be more mindful of your wifely responsibilities. I had recently married. I didn't move in expecting to be treated as a servant. This was hardly the marriage I had imagined. Perhaps I should have filed for divorce right away. But I was 40 at the time. My friends and co-workers had married a long time ago, and they had been chatting about me, saying that I had- Ava is my name. I'm a 30-year-old office worker. In fact, I just got married a few days ago. I've been a workaholic since I was a child and was promoted to team leader, which is an impressive feat for a woman. My career satisfied me, but being alone might be lonely at times. I'd hear whispers from the younger employees that, no matter how competent she is at her profession, living without a husband after 40 isn't nice, or she seems to have missed out on a woman's happiness. Backbiting was something I was aware of. There were co-workers who admired me, but the breeze of society was frigid to a single lady in her 40s. Then I ran into Liam again at a high school reunion. Liam was likewise single and appeared to be looking for a partner but couldn't manage to locate one. We struck it off right away and got married after dating for a bit. Like me, Liam may have made the easy calculation that he would marry anyone if he could. But I had a soft spot for Liam, an old acquaintance I'd known since high school. I assumed that as our marriage progressed, our love would get stronger. I hoped that would happen. Liam stipulated one condition for marriage. That was to reside at his family's home with his mother. Liam, who had lost his father when he was young and lived with his mother, couldn't take the thought of leaving his ailing mother alone. One of the reasons Liam's quest for a partner was likely unsuccessful was that living with his mother-in-law could be difficult. But, before marriage, the mother-in-law appeared like a nice person, saying things like, I have no doubt about anyone who will become Liam's wife. I was afraid he'd be alone his entire life, and I'm so relieved that it brings tears to my eyes. In the long run, I'd probably have to care for her in her old age, so I reasoned that it could be preferable to live together from the beginning. That's what I assumed. I also established a condition for living together. This was about bringing James, my long-term cat. On a rainy day, 
I carried a stray cat to my apartment complex. He's now an important member of the family. I couldn't stand parting with James even after I married and relocated to my husband's parents' place. As I pleaded, Liam and my future mother-in-law graciously agreed. So, following a simple wedding ceremony, James and I entered Liam's family house. However, once we started living together, my mother-in-law, who was meant to be kind, drastically changed her attitude. Ava, now that you're married and a member of this family, won't you take care of the chores every day? My mother-in-law sipped her tea with a tranquil face. Ah, uh, finally, Liam is married. I can take it easy from now on. I've been telling him to hurry, find a woman, and bring her home since my back is hurting. Ha! Huh? What? I couldn't catch up with the quick change. Did she mean all the chores were my responsibility? Of course, since I was living there, I meant to do my part of the housework. But the way my mother-in-law's phrasing it, it sounded like I'd be doing everything. It should have been distributed among the three of us, including Liam. Divided. Wait a minute, please. I didn't get married to become a maid. I tried to assert, but my mother-in-law casually remarked, Oh, didn't you say you wanted to dedicate yourself to your mother-in-law? Ha! Huh. When and who stated that? When I scowled at Liam, who was standing next to me, he quickly diverted his gaze. Liam had apparently been lying to my mother-in-law in order to impress her. Whatever Liam says, I'm not here to be a maid. Of course, I'll do my fair share of the housekeeping, but it should be shared among the three of us. For the sake of the future, it was preferable to disclose the truth sooner rather than later. Oh my. Do you think Liam should help with the housekeeping as well? Liam is an adult. Men are now expected to handle housekeeping. What happens to single men who live alone if men don't do housework? That's correct. Isn't housework exclusively the domain of women? Liam also mentioned something similar. Do these two have antiquated ideas from before the 1980s? If this were a computer operating system, it would have been decommissioned long ago. I was horrified on the inside, but I couldn't say anything else to Liam or my mother-in-law. I guess I believed it was vital to play the good wife at this time. They proceeded to dump the housework on me as if they could see right through me. So my hellish existence began. Hey! Get up instead of sleeping in. Begin making breakfast as soon as possible. My mother-in-law kicked my pillow before the sun even rose at 4 a.m. My mother-in-law was elderly, so she always got up early and came to wake me up, with little regard for the fact that it was the couple's bedroom. It didn't matter if I had worked late the night before or if it was a holiday. A kick to my pillow jolted me out of sleep, and Liam was sound asleep next to me. I jolted Liam awake. Could you please say something to your mother? It is still 4 a.m. Liam mumbled something that sounded like he was half asleep. Older people get up early, so give her some slack and yawn. I'm going to bed now. As Liam was about to fall asleep again, I kicked his pillow away with all my strength. You should also do some housework. I don't want to be the only one who is awakened. Ha! Huh? Why me? Mom always thought it was the wife's responsibility. His son is like his mother. Furthermore, James, who sleeps in a different room, began to wake up early as a result of my mother-in-law. Actually, as soon as my mother-in-law awoke, she'd pester James, which would wake him up and cause him to come to me for assistance. It was hard for me to sleep if he started making a commotion with his end-of-the-world meowing. Then, on the opposite side, my mother-in-law would complain about the noise. Loudspeakers from their right and left felt like they were attacking me. I was completely miserable. I adored James, but I despised both my mother-in-law and my husband. Even if I began performing chores at 4 a.m., my mother-in-law and my husband would only complain about my techniques. Please improve. Despite reaching the age of 40, you can't even complete one chore properly. 
What a waste of time. We need you to be more mindful of your wifely responsibilities. I had recently married. I didn't move and expecting to be treated as a servant. This was hardly the marriage I had imagined. Perhaps I should have filed for divorce right away. But I was 40 at the time. My friends and co-workers had married a long time ago, and they had been chatting about me, saying that I had missed the boat. I was considered a loser no matter how well I was at my job since I hadn't found one. I couldn't imagine what people would think if I divorced so soon after finally being married. I knew it was petty pride, but I couldn't let it go. Perhaps Liam saw right through it. Get out if you don't want to do chores. We can divorce if you want, but you'll be the one in hot water, right? If you don't like it, you should respect my mother a lot more. Regrettably, I had little choice but to obey at the time. However, a life of waking up at 4 a.m. M, it was awful to be instructed until late at night. Fatigue built up until I collapsed at work. I was in the hospital when I awoke. Amelia, my colleague, had stayed with me. Ah. Are you alert? Good. I was concerned when you collapsed unexpectedly. Amelia had been a dependable co-worker who admired me. Thank you very much. I apologize for causing you any inconvenience. So it's fine, my spouse will come and pick me up. Amelia paused when I smiled at her. I called your house after you were taken to the hospital. But they just stated, okay, and also. Despite their daughter-in-law's collapse, neither my mother-in-law nor husband appeared to be on their way to get me. Amelia's narrative has more to it. Is there anything more I should know? I was told that there is a mountain of ironing to be done, so come home as soon as you wake up. It is a waste of money to take a cab. I was taken aback. Not only was I not picked up, but the only things on my mind were ironing and cab money. Was I just a piece of equipment in that house? Amelia glanced at me with concern as she noticed my silent devastation. Are you okay, manager? You appear to have been battling since your marriage. Amelia looked sincere in her concern for me, and I found myself telling her the truth. It was awkward to discuss my personal life with a subordinate, but I had nowhere else to express my concerns. That's exactly what's going on. I'm exhausted since I'm responsible for the house from 4 a.m. until late at night. But that is a wife's responsibility. I attempted to fake a smile. After all, I couldn't show Amelia my frailty. Amelia, on the other hand, inquired solemnly. What exactly does it mean to be a wife? Are you a serf? Ah. Why do you put up with this? You should simply divorce him. No, I mean, it's not awful enough to warrant a divorce. I quickly shook my head. Divorce was out of the question. What would people say if I did anything like that? That is absurd. This is not acceptable. You work hard at your job, but you are treated like a slave. If this continues, you will collapse. Is your husband worth sacrificing your life for? I admire you. I want you to be content. Amelia's remarks jolted me. That was correct. Why were those folks taking advantage of me? Why was I staying in this horrible marriage? It was because of my selfish pride. I am finally married. It would be humiliating to divorce. Such emotions were tying me down. From the outside, my current situation may appear to be embarrassing. No, it was I who should have been ashamed. I eventually made the decision to divorce. But after being so humiliated, I couldn't be content with just seeking a divorce. I intended to make Liam and my mother-in-law even more embarrassed. I desired retaliation. After much deliberation, I decided to postpone the divorce announcement until Thanksgiving Day. I went about my slave-like life silently until the day of the family celebration. Liam's ancestral house was in the countryside, 
and attending his family's party would take all day. Because the older relatives, including the head of the family, did not attend Liam and my wedding, this Thanksgiving day was effectively my first official introduction. You would better work hard at the ancestral event. If you do nothing, I'll be the one who is embarrassed. My mother-in-law poked me on the train ride home. Of course, yes. I will give it my all. I forced a grin. Yes, I was planning to work with people from the main family tree. I began working as soon as we arrived at their house. I proactively gave tea to relatives, set up sofas, and rushed to the help of the elderly who were having difficulty walking. The normal greetings ended, and the feast began. I quickly and elegantly placed the dinner on the table. My daughter-in-law is completely ineffective and lethargic. She ages but doesn't contribute anything. It's quite aggravating. My mother-in-law had apparently been complaining like crazy to the relatives before Thanksgiving. Initially, the relatives who had previously been cold to me seemed impressed by my focused hard work. She is not the person we were told about. She is indeed a pleasant, hardworking, and wonderful daughter-in-law. Despite such compliments, I sheepishly said, oh, no, I'm always getting scolded by my mother-in-law. Unfortunately, I am a less than perfect daughter-in-law. Because of my demeanor, the relative's perception of me seemed to completely change. What does a less than perfect daughter-in-law make the rest of us? You may be the perfect daughter-in-law. He he he, more and more compliments were heard. I lowered my gaze and chuckled with delight. I received the idea that I had made a strong impression on the primary family. The feast was then coming to an end. It was about that time. I stood up and sat in the center of the living room on a chair. Ha! Huh. When I abruptly sat in the center of the seats, everyone was taken aback, and Liam exclaimed in confusion. What? What exactly are you doing? I ignored Liam and continued, it appears the feast is coming to an end. Please pardon me. It is extremely unfortunate, but I must say goodbye to you all after only having the pleasure of meeting you. Liam and I have chosen to divorce. This is the final time you'll see me. I believed I'd only get to spend time with you once, so I did my best to express my appreciation. I wish you the best of luck. I eventually gave the speech I had planned. The relatives moved. Liam and my mother-in-law were the most astonished. What? What's all this discussion about divorce? I won't put up with this. That's correct. Divorce is no laughing matter. I said calmly, oh. But weren't you the one who suggested I leave? Leave if you despise housekeeping. If we split, you'll be the one who suffers the most. After considerable consideration, I realized that if we split, I would be unconcerned. Then I addressed my mother-in-law. But you've been dumping all of the cleaning on me while I work and while you sit in front of the TV snacking. And you've been telling your relatives that I'm sluggish and lazy. What gave you the right to say such things about me? Who has been woken up at 4 a.m. by you to complete chores? With rage, I declared this. The women of the main household began to whisper amongst themselves, as if taken aback by my strength. That's correct. I also heard it. She claimed to have a bad in-law who did nothing. So, I expected some horrible daughter-in-law to arrive, but that is not the case. At the Thanksgiving dinner, my relatives had been witnessing my hard labor. I went on. I did my best to keep the household running since I wanted to marry into this family. But neither my mother-in-law nor Liam admitted it, and I've been wrongly implicated as a result. It's too much for me. I'm going to leave. Goodbye. Wait, Ava, calm down. The mother-in-law attempted to smooth things over, looking concerned about the crowd's reaction. It was already too late at that point. I'm completely calm. Isn't it you, mother-in-law, who is terrified since the truth has reached the relatives? 
It was then Liam's turn to stammer. Are you serious about divorce, Ava? All I wanted was for you to be a decent wife. What makes a nice wife? That word irritated me greatly. I straightened up and cast a chilly glance at Liam. So, how good of a spouse have you been?